Hello, welcome to Glenwood Cemetery. It's been my resting place for over a hundred years now. And isn't it lovely, especially today? I was born in Norway in 1868. And my name is Mary Johnson Rasmussen. Just five years later, my family immigrated to Utah and settled in Oakley, about 15 miles from here. It was called Oak Creek back then. When I was 19, I managed to meet and marry another Norwegian. His name was Thomas Rasmussen. We didn't go back to Oakley. He was living in Wanship at the time, but we decided to establish our home in Park City. And that's where we had our two children, Ella May, and seven years later, little Harry. Thomas was a great provider for our family. He worked for the Rio Grande Western Railroad and was a section foreman. He was so strong, he could lift a railroad tie right to his shoulder and haul it anywhere he wanted to go. His younger brother Severin was away fighting the war, the Spanish-American War. But in 1899, those boys in brown came home by train and we in Park City were so glad to see them. We decorated the town with banners and buntings and flags. And when they got off the train, we paraded them right down Main Street. I still have a photo from that day. I'm not sure which one is Severin, but I'm sure he had a smile on his face. Those boys were so glad to be home. The Park City Military Band played home sweet home. A lot of them had been sick with malaria and dysentery. Some still were. Severn was very ill, so we brought him home to live with us, and I managed to nurse him back to health. I was a good nurse. I was a good housekeeper, too. My house was tidy. Every day I had a special chore. Monday was the washing. Tuesday was the ironing, Wednesday I mended, and Thursday something else. But all of those chores had to be finished by noon because that's when I got dinner started. I was a pretty good cook if I say so myself, and everyone said that my bread that I baked and the butter I churned was just the best they'd ever tasted. You know, when the new year rolled around in 1900, we not only rang in a new century, but we started off with great news. Thomas and I were expecting again, and we were so excited. That was January, and it didn't take long for bad news to follow. One day, while Thomas was at work, he and a couple of his um, worker crew were on a handcart, pumping their way all the way to Park Junction to check on the rails there and do some repair. They were going along at a pretty good clip, and I'm not sure exactly what happened, but a wheel broke and that cart stopped so quickly it threw Thomas right off and then gave him a great blow to the head. They brought him home immediately and the doctor was summoned and he did what he could. He even removed some bone particles from his fractured skull. But no matter what he did, it didn't help. Thomas never regained consciousness and he passed away that night at home. Now we had his funeral service at the Masonic Hall and it was presided over by the Ancient Order of United Workers. They did a wonderful service and they brought his remains here to Glenwood and he's buried right here beside where I stand. Oh, that was not the only sad news our family had because just a few months later, I gave birth to our son, Ernest and he only lived for two months. He died of complications from cholera, and we buried him here beside his father. You know, I just didn't know how my family was gonna survive without Thomas and without an income. And I was so angry with that railroad that I went to court and I claimed that they needed to help support our family because they shouldn't have given Thomas a, a broken cart that caused his life and I claimed for $5,000. Well, I didn't get five, I got 1,000 and they paid the court costs, so that would help us for a little while, but my children were young. I didn't know how we were gonna survive. Well, luckily for all of us, Severin was still part of our family and he stepped up to do his duty and really become part of our family. We were married by an elder in the Mormon church down in Salt Lake City. 
and we decided that we would like to leave Park City and maybe try farming. So we kept the house in Park City, but we bought some land over in Oakley near where my parents farmed. And that's where we stayed for the next few years. We enjoyed our life there and we had three children. One little baby boy died shortly after he was born. But you know, by the spring of 1919, I began to have some health issues. I was only 50, but I just wasn't feeling very well. We moved back to Park City where I could be close to the doctors and also where Ella, my daughter, could help take care of me. I even had an operation in my abdomen to remove a tumor, but that just didn't help. In October, I passed away. In 1919, I was only 50 years old, but they brought me here and buried me next to the rest of my family. And Severin, you know, Severin decided to go on down south and he relocated to Mountain Home near Duchesne. He farmed there for another few years and when he passed away, he was buried there with military honors from his duty back in the Spanish-American War. You know, life brings good times and bad times to us all. But when the end comes after some weariness and some illness, there's no better place to be but at peace right here in Glenwood Cemetery. Thanks for coming to see me and I hope you'll walk the paths again and stop and say hello. Bye now. Glenwood Cemetery is in desperate need of restoration of these fragile headstones and the cemetery grounds in which they rest. Please join Park City Museum's efforts to preserve these beautiful pieces of art while protecting and promoting our historical legacy. Donate by visiting the website below and be a part of keeping Park City's history alive. Thank you. Watching out for trouble all the time Following the water, ducking from the rain Well, I was meant to be there all the 